Okay, I'm. Some of you weren't here last night, so I'm going to. While everyone's arriving, I'm going to show you this. You know, when I'm talking in the morning or any time about aligning your ears with your shoulders, I'm sh going to show you why. So here we have an, a normal, um, pretty much normal posture with a phone. And your head is generally around 10 to 12. I heard it was 13 pounds in weight. So when it's sitting kind of on top of your shoulders, uh, you know, you have a fairly nicely aligned body. And you're holding 10 to 12 pounds up there. So when you have a, uh, your head tip forward by 15 degrees, like it's out of alignment of your spine by 15 degrees, it becomes 27 pounds of weight that you're carrying. And then if you have 30 degrees out of alignment, it's 40 pounds. 45 degrees out of alignment is 49 pounds and 60 degrees out of alignment is 60 pounds. It's amazing to me. So what happens when, um, as what happens is as your head starts to fall forward and we get habituated to this kind of posture, we can't see forward, right? We want to see what's ahead of us. So then we start, we bring our head up like this. So then we get this, this posture of this kind of crick in the neck. So the neck is shortened and you're going like this to try and look ahead. And um, your your back kind of caves in, so your heart chest compressed. Uh, you're not breathing sort of the way you should be. Also, um, you know, sometimes in our efforts to sort of stand up straight, we kind of we, we lift our shoulders. So it's just really good to, as you're settling yourself into meditation, just to think about, you know, if you are poking your head forward or not. So also try one of the reasons not to be raising your chin up like this. It does create agitation in the mind, but you can see why, because you're you're um, compressing the back of the neck at the occipital. So anyway, I thought I find, I love this diagram. I find it so helpful for myself. Anyway, I promised everybody in the um, Vajra Sattva group I would show you how to tie yourself up with a yoga strap or a, a dressing gown so then we can you and you can actually sit my chiropractor suggested that I do this for sit uh in this way for like to walk around for about 20 minutes a day so anyway I'll stop sharing that anyway, I thought it was helpful all right so we're going to do Tara today so she came home she's behind me <laughs> I just couldn't bear her being rolled up in storage. So I'm just layering all the tunkers now. That's what the, the llamas do, I've seen. Okay. So let's just settle into a nice, comfortable, seated posture. And with our with our Mr. Forward-looking phone man, keep him in mind. Also fairly androgynous figure, so. And if you are sitting... Uh, you know, at your desk or at a table and your feet are down, <clears throat> have them about a hips width apart, shoulders, sorry, shoulder, your shoulders are aligned with the hips and uh, your ears align with your shoulders and a little bit of length in the back of the neck. So try not to tip the chin up. And so if if you are starting anyway, have started to develop a little bit of a forward, you know, I guess a forward fold, and some creativity around your spine as we get older, just to do what you can, whatever is available to you in terms of aligning your ears with your shoulders. And imagine you're lengthening your spine. It's like a, a string of pearls of light stretching from the base all the way up through the crown of the head and beyond. And so just as you get to the crown of the head, just notice any sensation there.
And just release any tension. Relax the forehead, the eyes, the nose, the cheeks, the mouth, the jaw, back of the head, back of the neck. Allow your shoulders and shoulder blades to drop down and relax the throat and the chest. In the belly. And relax all your limbs. And then notice the sensation of the air as you're inhaling and exhaling. And be aware of any sounds in your environment. So our forest birds are, are well awake here. And then be aware of the thoughts that are arising. So some of you who are here on the West Coast, probably, you know, as you wake up, your mind is still fairly, well, anyway, I don't know, my mind is a little bit calmer in the morning than is in the evening. So there's not too many kind of thoughts floating through. <laughs> Maybe there's nothing there. But just be aware of what's what's kind of arising. Maybe you have some plans for the day. So try not to allow all of those sort of your plans for the day or the people that you're going to meet or the some any kind of particular work that you're going to do this morning. Just, uh, just allow that. Try and not have that kind of rush in just yet. If it hasn't already, for those of you on the east or on the other side of the country. So just give your mind a little bit of space. And notice the quality of your conscious mind this morning. Is it kind of sharp and edgy or is it sort of soft and floaty, and just feel. And bring to mind all these people of our life. Uh, you know, we have people that we have deep, deep profound relationships with, and then there's those that we are not so fond of, and then there's our strangers and they can all change place. And they're all equal in their wish to be happy. They wish to be free from suffering and having this extraordinary capacity of Buddhahood. So we'll do this Tara meditation this morning for all these people of our life. And by extension, all sentient beings. And I think probably for Mary and her family, her mum. Okay. So imagine, oh, I need to find Tara for you. Hang on one sec. Tara. For those of you who need this, uh, here's our Tara. She imagine she's in the space in front of you and she has this beautiful radiant light body. It's very beautiful. She's sitting on a multicolored lotus. Her left foot is drawn in and her right foot is out 
resting on its own multicolored lotus. And his her left foot drawn in indicates this complete effortless control over her desire energy and her right foot out indicates her willingness and capacity to get up and, and act for sentient beings. So she's ready for action. And often she's referred to as this wish-fulfilling Buddha and she's representing this quick capacity represented here as female to cut through the obstacles and to get things done and to be successful and, of course, to make us all blissful. So imagine Tara is just very beautiful. She's very young, full of energy, full of bliss, useful, youthful. And she wears these beautiful colored uh, silken garments and jewelry. She's got jewelry around her ears and her ankles, her arms and her neck. You can also imagine that this is the mind of your teacher and your teacher is appearing as green Tara for your benefit. To the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, I go for refuge until I'm enlightened. By this practice of meditating on Guru Tara, may I reach Buddhahood so as to benefit all the sentient beings. So imagine um, now from Tara's brow, blissful white light. This is from the Om at her brow chakra. And this enters your brow and completely fills you. And imagine that all your problems and sufferings and heaviness of body are purified by this light. And all the harm you've ever done to any living being with this body and all infinite past bodies is also purified, eradicated completely. Not one atom left. And after a as we'll just recite the mantra or we imagine that first. Om tare tu tare tu re so Om tare tu tare tu re so Om tare tu tare tu re so Om Dare to Dare to Reso Om Dare to Dare to Reso Om Dare to Dare to Reso And now imagine the light coming again, and this time you can imagine your body has become a blissful light body, just like Tara's, indestructible, just like it will be when you, when we all attain the deity's body, the Sambhavakaya, and imagine it's not possible to ever harm others with this body, only to benefit. Om Tare to Tare to Re So 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 Om Tare to Tare to Re So
No, our speech. So I imagine that Tara sends this beautiful red light from her, the R at her throat chakra, chill throat. And this purifies all the problems of speech. So, you know, like in an inappropriate speech, useless speech, uncontrolled speech, angry speech, criticism, and this inability that we sometimes have to express ourselves appropriately and all the harm we have ever done to any living being with our speech of this life and infinite past lives is also totally purified and imagine it's eradicated by this blissful red light, not one atom left. Om tare tu tare tu re so 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 And then the light comes again and imagine you're full of this blissful, perfect, compassionate wisdom, appropriate speech of Lama Tara, such that whatever sound you utter is necessarily beneficial to any living being who hears it. And all of this is your potential. So feel really full of this powerful speech energy. Om tare tu tare tu re so 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 And now Tara 
Lama Tara sends powerful beams of blue light, blue like the sky, from the blue hum at her heart chakra, and this enters your heart. And just imagine that all the unhappiness of mind, so any confusion, arrogance, anger, jealousy, pride, resentment, hurt, anxiety, self-hate, all of this is completely purified and that all all our delusions, including the root delusion, ego grasping, which is the cause of all of our own suffering, and why we harm others. Imagine this is completely eradicated by this powerful blue light. Not one atom left. Om tare tu tare tu re so 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 And now imagine the blue light coming again, and this time feel full of all the blissful, omniscient, compassionate mind of Lamatara. And this is your potential. Om tare tu tare tu re so 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 And now imagine the, the blue lights coming again. Sorry, the, well, the three lights coming again. The white om at the brow, the red ah at the throat, and the blue hum at the heart. And they sort of penetrate simultaneously your three places, this time feeling that even the subtlest stains of all delusion are completely eradicated. Not one atom left as we recite the mantra again. Om tare tu tare tu re so Om tare 
tu tare tu re so Om tare tu tare tu re so Om tare tu tare tu re so Om tare tu tare tu re so Om tare tu tare tu re so So feel very blissful stay in this blissful state for a minute or so concentrating on being one with the energy of mother tara Now imagine Tara's little foot lotus dissolves upwards into her leg and her main lotus dissolving up into her body. And then she comes to the crown of your head facing the same way as you. And out of her wish to become one with your mind, and remember this is also the mind of your teacher, she dissolves into light, green light, melts into you through your crown and merges with your body and your speech and your mind and now think I am one with Lama Tara's holy body holy speech and holy mind and you feel blissful Everyone just relax. Let's just dedicate all the merit, all the positive energy we've created by doing this practice this morning, this meditation to all those people of our life, by extension, all sentient beings. Okay, everybody, lots of love. I'll see some of you this evening. Thank you so much for hosting, Shayla, and thanks for coming. Okay, bye, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.